Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Versace Eros is a favorite of the Versace line. In fact, it could be accurately said that Eros is a fragrance that best represents the validity and the direction and the, the actual DNA of the company and the direction that it's going in terms of, of men's fragrance. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the historicity and the relevance of Versace Eros today. So stay tuned, coming up next. Eros is, of course, the son of Aphrodite in Greek mythology, who is the goddess of love. I think when Versace Eros was first advertised, it's been about a decade ago, as well as 2012, when it was first launched. And the original advertising campaign was of a guy in, who was mostly nude, but he basically had on this kind of sort of gladiator outfit. And the idea behind the campaign was that a man who wears Versace Eros is a fighter. He's a fighter for his goals. He fights for what's right. He's a hero, so he best represents the best qualities that we have in terms of protecting ourselves and our family, our ideas, our ideology, and our, our goals, or whatever is important to us. Versace Eros, the new fragrance for men. And I really like that, the ideal behind that, and that's really what went into the marketing, the campaign, and the idea behind the fragrance. Versace Eros. So if you take this idealistic, pure fighting gladiator angst and you distill it into a drop of liquid, that would be Versace Eros. So in essence, the idea behind Versace Eros is carpe diem, seize the day, or in the fragrance community, as they might say, carpe imbre, seize the spray. Okay, that was really bad. Now in terms of the presentation, I really like the bottle, I will show you up close. Let's see, let me get it this way. On the very top, you can see the now iconic Medusa head, which has become the logo of Versace because of that, you know, Greek mythos, uh, Greek mythology. I'll show you in the middle of the bottle. The bottle itself is of a turquoise and square design. This is the 50 mil bottle. It comes in, I believe, 100 mil or 50, 75, 100, 125. So it comes in various bottle sizes. I just happen to like the smaller bottle. And for reasons that, you know, I've mentioned in previous videos, it's easier to carry around, especially when you're going to the gym back and forth, things like that, and just fits easy and fits nice in your, in your hand. Versace Eros in gold lettering on the turquoise background. Turquoise is like a blue green. It's one of my favorite colors of all time. I really do like it. And if you look around the actual logo, around the square, you've got some really nice filigree. It kind of is reminiscent of the Celtic infinity knot. It's not hard to see where the designers drew their inspiration from if you look at old like Greek pottery. Here's a photo of something called a Skyphos, which is a basically a wine glass that was created and it's got a similar design on it. And this is what's called a terracotta pyxis, which is basically just a box with a lid on it. Next I'll show you a photo of a what's called a proto-geometric vase. It's not hard to see again where Versace drew their inspiration from very similar design around the bottle and it's very pleasing to the eyes in terms of uh, presentation. I'm going to show you the sticker on the bottom so that you can see the batch code because that's important to a lot of people because vintage Eros is not the same as the reformulated Eros. I don't have a bottle of, of vintage. When I first used Eros, it was probably back in 2015 that I can remember and I really liked it. I do feel like it was maybe a skosh stronger. But for my purposes and for my use, I really enjoy the reformulation. It's, it's perfectly suitable to me and, and so similar that it's appropriate for all the same activities. Now it would make sense that a, when you think of, this is often called the clubbing fragrance and that's fine. It can continue carrying that label, clubbing fragrance. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I think a lot of times when a fragrance gets pigeonholed like that, people think, well, it's only for that use. You know, if you want to get a date, you want to get laid or whatever the case may be this is the fragrance you want to wear and i think maybe the vintage eros was a little bit stronger we'll say louder because think of the the situation in a club where the music is super loud it's not really a great place to communicate with someone so you have to communicate through nonverbal cues and one really good and a attractive nonverbal cue is a fragrance so this was a little bit louder as well being put in a loud club situation and it worked to 
that advantage, it worked it really well, I think. But for our purposes today, this is extremely close to that fragrance. And in terms of longevity and your sillage, your projection, it's gonna give you about the same use. As mentioned, this is one of my favorite all around bottle presentation designs for uh, Versace, if not my favorite. And I was really happy to see that they continued that with the Versace Eros Flame. So the only difference in that bottle design is that it's red instead of turquoise. That's pretty much it for the presentation. The bottles are of different sizes and hold different quantities. However, they're all the same in terms of presentation. Just again, a different size. But what about the juice inside? So let's take a look at the note breakdown of Versace Eros. In the top, you've got mint, apple, and lemon. In the mid, you've got tonka bean, geranium, and ambroxan. In the base, you've got vanilla, vetiver, oak moss, atlas cedar, and Virginia cedar. So two types of cedars. So we've got cedar pretty much covered. Now, what kind of fragrance does that create? To me, when you first spray this on, I can't tell what, what Eros is gonna be. It's almost like a college student that changes his major like three or four times before he finally decides what he wants to pursue, he or she wants to pursue, what he or she wants to be. That's kind of way, the way this is in the top. Now, when you first smell it, that mint is a little bit synthetic, kind of a lot synthetic, but when it starts mixing with the apple and especially the lemon together, the three of those together, they kind of form one sensation or flavor to me that is very minty. However, it kind of reminds me of something that my friends and I used to go to the dime stores when we were kids and I think it was called Nickel Nips. It's kind of a really weird name of a, for a candy. So it kind of has like a, a kind of a waxy candy smell and reminiscent of that. I think it was like a just kind of a sugar flavored kind of like Kool-Aid inside of a little wax bottles. So it was kind of a candy, sort of a candy. You couldn't really eat it because you couldn't swallow the wax. You had to throw it out. So just you swallow the liquid. And then after that, it was pretty much done. So it's kind of a waste of money, but hey, as kids, we loved it. And it kind of it reminds me of that. Kind of the, the flavor of that kind of a waxy, synthetic, but very candy-like fragrance. Then it gets a little bit, as, as it goes from the dry down from the mid to the base, it gets a little bit creamier, the tonka creates a little bit more of the cream and then it gets into the vanilla. So you've got more of the gourmand creamy sweetness, but then it mixes with the cedar and then you, that's what gives it that masculine pump, that masculine push. So the top and the mid are, are again, a little bit synthetic, a little bit sweet, a little bit candy-like, but then the masculine pump comes into the base and the dry down is ultimately what's so nice about this. Great daytime casual wear, nighttime date night fragrance still it carries the label of clubbing fragrance that's perfectly fine i used to club quite a bit you know in the nightlife and socializing it does work really well in heat so bodies on the dance floor heat a lot of heat is generated it pumps and infuses a little bit more time into that longevity i get a good six to seven to possibly eight hours of this again if it's associated with heat, like the heat of the dance floor, or heat of an activity like that, imbue a little bit more time in the longevity and extend that projection or that sillage trail a little bit more as well. Now Versace Eros carries a lot of hype with it. And the best way to answer that question for yourself is, is, is it hype worthy, is to try it for yourself. A lot of people like Eros because it's kind of like Italian glam, only it's Italian glam that is accessible to everyone. And to me, when I smell Eros, it is like money. That's what it smells like. So it smells like the average person has access to funds, maybe beyond their means, which is kind of cool, right? So when people see a car that is super fancy or nice or a home or whatever it is, a conspicuous consumption, it's been often called, it kind of sends a message of status quo. And that's what Versace Eros is to a lot of people is status quo. And that's fine. It's kind of, it's kind of like another label. To me, this defies a genrefying or a label and because I feel like it, is, it has come so far in almost a decade of use that it's come around the bend. Like it's worthy of, that's why I'm even talking about it today because I think it's worth a revisit. Like a lot of fragrances that are now getting a little bit older, they've opened themselves up to a little bit more versatility, a little bit more use. This is to me again, great for casual wear, daytime, nighttime, date night fragrance. 
Uh, you can wear this to the office. It used to be a DNA you'd smell all the time. Now with a lot more fragrances being produced, this is again been relegated a little bit to the background. I think it's time to bring it up to the foreground again because it is very unique. This wasn't trying to be anything else when it was created, and today it's still very unique fragrance. There's not a lot of fragrances that have tried to duplicate the DNA of Versace Eros, so it still stands as being a very unique and versatile fragrance for men. So dust off your bottle of Eros, or order one if you haven't, give it another try, give it another whirl. I think we should not stigmatize or genrefy uh, or label our fragrances anymore before we try them out in certain circumstance or situations because it might surprise you just how versatile this has become. Again, just to reiterate, longevity for me is about a good six to seven hours. You can add another hour in there if you're activating it with heat and the projection at least a good two hours for me before it starts pulling back and dialing back a little bit, again, depending upon the activity. So very good fragrance. If you don't own it, highly recommend adding it to your your rotation is something I think you'll be very pleased with, especially with that mint fragrance. Uh, mint is not supremely used in a lot of fragrances and it's used to really good effect in Versace Eros. Well that's it guys for my covering of a very well known and very loved fragrance, Versace Eros. Again it's time I think to dust it off off your shelf, get it down, use it again open up its versatility for you. If you have any thoughts about your use and good memories you have of Versace Eros or another Versace favorite, please list it in the comments below. Your comments are always appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. As always, I really and truly appreciate the support. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.